This one right here. The cyberpunk anime is actually incredible. Let's react to it. Yeah, and the trailer as well. Big bang. Where the fuck did this come from? Seeing the explosion of anime in the past 10 years was bloody exciting if you were an anime fan before. Suddenly this niche little medium you loved was starting to get noticed by a wider audience and that was a good yep. thing. Because this must have meant so many more great anime that would have never been made not this one. <laughs> Before might just be on the horizon. The small fan run companies we followed got an injection of money they needed. Big players were starting to get into the game. There was so much potential for cool projects. So much promise of the medium being taken to the next level. It was hectic. It was exciting. The possibility seemed endless. And what did we get? We've been preparing our Don't whole remind lives me, man. for this day. One thing we did get was more anime, but that didn't necessarily mean that was more great anime. The shows you wanted to watch were split across a million different streaming platforms, and some of the shows you were excited for had all their possible hype killed when the yes. wrong platform picked it up. This wasn't on the fine print of the expectations we had, but every so often there comes along a project that makes me remember, all right, maybe anime getting worldwide recognition wasn't such a bad thing after all. Yeah, every now and then we get a bunch of uh, gems. Like nearly all the time, like every single year, there's like at least uh, one or two bangers in the anime scene. Cyberpunk Edgerunners might be one of the most exciting collaborative projects I've seen in years. Coming from Studio Trigger and CD's Nuts Project Red, <laughs> this was the type of project we were waiting for. Following their very successful launch of Cyberpunk 2077, CD Project Red obviously saw potential for more stories to take place in the world they had crafted and in the process might have accidentally made one of the best things to come out all year. Continuing this unexpected but wonderful trend of animated video game adaptations slapping harder than an yeah. Asian parent who'd just been given a bad report card. <laughs> A series is like 10 times better than the game itself. That's right, guys. Especially if you I'm a real gamer. Not because I play them, but because I watch them. Which is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Honkai Impact 3rd. <laughs> wow. Oh, what the hell was that segue? Honkai Impact 3rd is an yeah. anime game from the I developers know, at Hoyaverse, which is a company I've never heard of and I'm totally not familiar with. Why are you looking at me like that? This is a stunning, exciting action RPG with addictive you know gameplay and top tier girls available on PC and mobile. And honestly, the story is pretty damn good too. No cap. Right now, Honkai Impact 3rd's version 6.0 just dropped with new characters, the second phase of the summer event, and a major update for the main chapter. There's a whole new battle suit as Alicia, the Hershey of Human, joins the game with this update. And come on, just look at her. This is a girl you want on your team. And don't forget, we also have part two of the summer events, giving us the Summer Survival Rhapsody Side 13. The event includes three chapters, and just by taking part, you get a chance to win Shadow Knight's new summer outfit. But wait, there's more. There will be two more summer outfits okay. that you can get for Grissio and and Vil V. This is why I love summer, baby. Use the link in the description to download the game today and you can use the code on screen right now to get 30 crystal, 2,888 asteroids, and a Herschel trial card for free. Thank you to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring us today. And now, back to science. Yeah, if you're in need of a gacha, go support Grant like he does. He does good shit and he definitely deserves it. Punk. Cyberpunk Edgerunners is a canon side story in the Cyberpunk 2077 universe, taking place in the future in the dark, gritty, violent, dystopian nightmare called the United States of America. <laughs> I mean, Night City. David is a kid just trying to survive in the city, attending a prestigious school, being supported by his mum despite her struggling income. But after getting into a massive car Bro. accident, David comes, to David comes <laughs> to to find his mother has passed away because she couldn't afford proper healthcare. Wait a minute, guys, that was a joke. That was a fucking joke. You weren't meant to take that seriously. From there on, he has to resort to a life of crime, meeting Lucy, a skilled cyber hacker, and her fellow gang members. He joins their crew, taking on missions so they can survive together in the underbelly of Night City. All right, guys. I've got a confession to make. I am not actually a gamer. I lied before. I don't play video games. Think you can get away? Shut up. Except I haven't played Cyberpunk 2077 oh, yet, and my only prior knowledge about it was that... Same. The game was a little buggy, so I went into this completely blind, and while I'm sure I missed some Easter eggs here... Bro, but the, the game story itself was pretty good, even though it had so many bugs, but uh, the game itself, I, I, I just uh, watched a Let's Play, and it was pretty immersive. And there, it did not ruin my enjoyment at all. The world of Night City is stunningly brought to life under Trigger's eyes. Neon lights illuminate the concrete jungle with a fluorescent color palette. You can smell the stench of stale piss reeking from the back alleys. <laughs> Every random passerby feels like they have a story to tell. I think people forgot that beyond the glitches and T-posing, CD Projekt Red actually crafted a truly vibrant world with so much potential for interesting stories to take place. Edge Runners might not have Keanu Reeves, but it does have this guy. I do not pay you to think. I pay you. 
to check the boxes off my list. Wait a minute. Is that my man Gus from Breaking Bad? But what? you can call me sus. The first thing anyone- Like, like is it really the voice? will probably notice is Studio Trigger's footprint stamped all over the show. You know, as much as I like Trigger, recently when I saw their name attached to a project, especially if it was being led by this man, Hiroyuki Yamaishi, I was Legend. starting to think I was watching a one-trick pony. I remember the first time I saw Gurren Lagann. I was blown away by the sheer absurd over-the-top hype contained in it. Then I saw Kill la Kill, and I was slightly less blown away by the sheer absurd over-the-top hype contained in it. Then I saw Promare. And I was puffed away by the sheer absurd over one? the top hype contained in it. And then I saw they were doing an episode of Star Wars Vision. And I was like, is there going to be some sheer absurd over the top yeah, hype was, contained uh, in this? Yep, there it is. This was the best scene, like uh, the best episode itself, just from a... Uh... From an animation standpoint, yeah. Now, did Edge Runners have some sheer absurd over the top hype contained in it? Yes, but it was actually kind of muted in comparison to all that other stuff. I mean, this may look ridiculous to you, but this is just the sound of driving experience in India. There are still <laughs> flashes of that classic balls to the wall trigger hype, but I feel like they had to restrain themselves a bit more than usual due to this being a canon story in a pre-existing universe. But because of this, they needed to find more creative ways to up the ante aside from going into space. Going into space. Going into space. Or my personal favorite, going into space. And I feel like by restricting them- Yeah, just... like they always go that route. Like if there's nothing stronger uh, uh, than you anymore on this planet they, they just go to the next level space universe shit and uh it, yeah for the first time it's interesting and fun i guess but after you've seen that shit like 10 times already um it's not that exciting anymore like especially with like darling the franks man that, that ending I, I was i was that was bad ending <laughs> yeah <laughs> Or, or the latter half, yeah. It was quite garbage. See a whole new side shine through. Oh, for fuck's sake. This, in my opinion, is one of their best looking shows to date. The gunplay on display is absolutely insane. David has this special ability to go bullet time, creating an army of after images for every movement he makes, which melts my mind every time I see it. But most notably, this is the first time I've seen them tackle an old school hyper violent show. And you could tell they had so much fun breaking all the shackles that usually limit them. Bodies get blown apart in an explosion of bright red blood. Intestines go flying out. Bits of skull and eyeballs rain down with every shotgun blast. Seeing this type of hyper violence being done with the trigger flare was a brutally beautiful sight I didn't know I needed until now. Trigger were already the masters of giving their shows a unique visual identity, but I feel like even here, everything was polished and sharpened to a level even further beyond. I remember the first time I boosted up Persona 5. I was enamored by just how much work must have been put into its aesthetics. The striking color palettes, the battle animations, the text messages, even the individual menus, everything down to the smallest details seemed to be meticulously crafted to fit this visual style. It was Literally just so one of the best stylized games out there. Like it's nearly perfect. Oof, fucking cool. And this is the exact same feeling I get when watching Edge Runners. Every frame is oozing with a visual flair most shows could only dream of achieving. There were some scenes with so much going on, it felt like my brain couldn't process all the stimuli it was receiving. This wasn't the rule of cool. This was the rule of fucking cool. And it was so refreshing seeing this team's insane creativity being pushed to a level I hadn't seen before. Then we got the soundtrack. You know how in most anime you got your normal background music, then during the season finale or some shit, it'll hit you with a special insert song they've saved up just for this moment Bro. and it's beautiful it elevates the moment and it kind of feels like it turns the scene into a narrative music video Still yeah the best scene. cyberpunk has that for like every episode the so is just overflowing really? with such fantastic tracks that at some point i feel like they had too many to work with there'd be a throwaway scene of just two characters talking and i'd be like only gonks talk down others shut up for a second eight. can we turn this music up the song's kind of a banger from synthwave <laughs> to metal to electro to fucking reggae so many scenes felt like i was watching a stylistic music video it was like i was watching fully all over again and then there's the writing good old classic man our cyberpunks aren't you oh they're morbid he, he said the thing <laughs> out of everything this is probably the least strongest aspect but i'm only saying that because everything else was absolutely stellar sure there were some awkward pieces of dialogue here and there i'm built different bro i'm a different breed of what i just told but honestly everything <laughs> okay. was solid and did what it needed to do i've seen a few complaints saying that there wasn't enough runtime and it kind of felt rushed but i didn't get that feeling at all to me it didn't feel rushed it just felt dense this is 10 episodes dense? packed to the absolute brim from start to finish the series 
series rarely gives you a chance to catch your breath. Shit's Isn't constantly going down. Situations are always evolving. And while it would have been nice to have an extra episode or two with a bit of downtime here and there, never once did it feel like a major story beat wasn't earned. And yet, even through everything, they still found time to make a standout episode. Episode 6 might be one of the best episodes of anime I've seen in years. From the opening second, something feels off. The air feels heavy. You find yourself being on edge. Everything is draped in an air of unease and you can't put your finger on exactly why. Like you're standing in the eye of an unseen storm. And what follows is a 20 minute psychedelic trip down into insanity that simply left me speechless by the end. It was an absolute Damn. masterclass of direction and cinema. And it's episodes like this that reminds me why the medium of animation is so fucking incredible. Even with a shorter episode count, it didn't affect how invested I was in everything. It's been a while since I've seen an ensemble that left such a big impression on me so quickly. Everyone feels memorable without feeling like they're just a walking trope. From looks to personality to attitude, each character is totally distinct from one another and have this group chemistry that's infectious. Main walks in as the charismatic father figure of the group. David's that eager younger brother. Rebecca was one of the more minor characters and yet with just a few scenes, she was able to leave a stronger impression than most characters do with hours of screen time. Hey David, my man, what's going on? It's series like this that shows you don't need hours of backstory to get attached or like a character. Everyone felt like they were a part of this dysfunctional family and there would be a gaping hole without them there. And you get just as emotional when some of the major events happen. Watching this reminded me of the feeling I got when watching Cowboy Bebop. I didn't need Spike, Faye or Jet's backstory to get attached to this crew. I already was way before their respective episodes because it was just a pleasure to spend time with all of them. You never wanted their journey to end, but you knew it had to eventually. And when it does, you're left with this bittersweet feeling of emptiness knowing that you've had to say goodbye to your time with them you're the guy who jumps into the fire to rescue someone anyone even when you know you're gonna get burned Cyberpunk Edge Runners is an example of what happens when you give a team gone mad with creativity the resources to do what they want to do. This is what it's like watching a show where every single person working on a project gives a shit. You can feel the love and excitement emanating from every single second of this runtime because absolutely no one half asked it. Everyone brought their A game, not a single person phoned it in. It's as much a passion project as it is a promotional piece for a gaming franchise everyone had already written off. This was the project we were promised when anime started to get more recognition globally. The prospect of some of the most talented names in the niche medium of anime we followed getting to go wild with some of the biggest names and franchises from a totally different medium was meant to give us more shows like this. And I hope that this isn't just Okay, the I'm definitely gonna watch it afterwards, man. Exception. <laughs> like all 10 episodes at once. But the standard for future collaborative anime projects to come. Bravo, guys. So what do you want? Videos, man. Not a single T pose, zero out of ten worst <laughs> adaptation of all time. <laughs> yeah, I think Cyberpunk was um made for made to be an enemy. Like it like a, it was supposed to be like that. The game itself, yeah. Mm, if I iron it out over the years, give it enough time, good DLCs, like do the uh, No Man's Sky No Man's Sky procedure, it might become like really, really great and uh, um, maybe uh, after such a long time, I'm gonna buy it, but right now, I don't know about the game, but the enemy is definitely a banger. We're gonna like the video, and you do that as well. You're gonna subscribe to Gigog, and after that, you're gonna do the same thing right here on my video. I really appreciate that. If you really see one more of this shit, like, yeah, just subscribe for more. Like he says, already. I guess that's it. See you next time. Wafer.